Well, the first trick that I ever marketed, uh, invented for marketing was uh, bang on. Uh, and that is uh, where any card named is in the wallet. And, uh, and that came about because I was, um, there was a trick by uh, Larry Becker, which I think was, was originated from a Kenton Nepper idea. You know, it's this off by one uh, idea. And uh, I really liked that, but I just wanted it to be um, not off by one. I, I, I always found that it was stronger when you didn't need that out of the off by one. So um, that's what motivated me to create Bang On. Hence, I, I, I'm in, in England, the, the term Bang On, uh, if you're aware or not, means just, you know, exactly correct. If it's Bang On, it's, it's, it's not half right or maybe it's, it's, but it's, that's Bang On. Yeah. It's a difficult question to answer that, um, but I can, I'll try and answer it in a couple of different ways. I, I, uh, I, I it, it, in the, sh the short answer is through experiment, through imagination and experimentation. So I, I think to myself, what, what do I want to see happen? Um, and it could be, I mean, in my gold act, my FISM act, I remember uh, thinking it would be really nice to have a flower and to be able to move my hand across the flower and it to slowly turn gold. Now, I actually, I didn't solve that problem, but in the process of experimenting and playing and trying to solve that problem, I came up with another method where it changed instantly. And, uh, and actually, you know, looked pretty good. So it was sometimes I think, you know, you can have a goal. This is what I want to have happen. And it, that's just something to get you started, to get playing. And then in, in, in the course of that, it's, oh, something new is discovered. You, usually it is like that, that it's not quite what you imagined in the beginning. It might be better or it might be, you know, just something different. Um, yeah, in the same way that um, I, I make a bird out, I, I, I wanted a piece of paper to fold itself into a bird in my hand and I didn't get that but then I thought well maybe if if I fold it and I the last part the, the neck rises out and the beak comes out that's you know it's not maybe as good or it's not as complicated or as complete as the whole thing makes itself but it's still it's nice so I think yeah it, it start is imagining creating a vision and and living into that vision uh you know and, and I was going to say compromise, but it's not quite compromising. So have a vision, something to get you going. And then if the vision changes, that's OK. It can be, oh, let's let's experiment in this way, you know, and that. So, yeah, it's uh, how to come up with new ideas. It's it's dreaming, imagining, daydreaming. And, uh, you, you know, I, I I've got some I leave. Uh, like, for example, there's a couple of there's three things that I'm working on at the moment, um, but I've positioned them in different areas of my house so that I will continually be walking past them and seeing these props and, you know, materials that will stimulate and re-stimulate my thinking along those effects. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, if I put it in a cupboard or put it in a drawer, I can forget about it. But if, if I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and I walk into the kitchen and I I see that thing again, it's, it's, you know, it's ticking away in, in my subconscious. Yeah, well, um, I, I was, the first competition, well, not the, when I started getting into competitions, um, I was, I didn't even, I actually didn't even know about FISM. Uh, I didn't even know phys what FISM was. Um, I was just entering a competition to try to up my game, to try to put myself under the pressure of performing in front of magicians and my peers and, you know, judges who knew, knew their stuff. To motivate me, really, to just, to just put myself under the, in, in, in that fearful scary situation to just say right i'm gonna have this i have to get this right i have to get this right so yeah i entered competitions just to improve as a magician and then 
I started to, well, I started to do pretty well. And people would say, oh, you did this one. How about entering for international? Or how about IBM? Or how about the American SAM IBM? And so, yeah, people just were telling me about the next thing I should do. And so I just went along with it. And as for preparing, um, I, I like to consult with a lot of people. So, um, and yeah, so the, my, my, I would prepare by, by showing my act to as many people as possible, magicians, non-magicians, anybody. Every single time I would have the opportunity to, to perform the act in, in front of people, um, you know, I, I considered it to be a learning experience. So when I, I would do a lecture tour, I did a lecture tour of Germany and 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 uh, and Italy and uh, and France. And every time I did a lecture, I would always start by performing my FISM act. And so, you know, and I could get feedback. Two types of I could literally get feedback by observing reactions and and the way that people clapped at different times and the you know just the the more you do it, the better you get. So I, I could observe people's reactions, but also I could talk to the magicians afterwards. And, and I, I, you know, I like having conversations with magicians. I'll, I'll actually invite sometimes maybe 10 magicians into my home and, and we'll all share ideas and, and I will perform and, I, and, you know, and just ask questions. What did you, did that work for you? And what, what, you know, did that bit fool you? Were you, what, were you surprised by that? What did you like best? Did, was that moment stronger than this moment or was, which was the, you know, just asking, I think, so I would prepare by getting a lot of feedback and knowing how to ask the right questions uh, and how to uh, read between the lines and to, to, yeah, so as I think to perform as much as possible and to consult and ask as many people as possible, as many things. And they, they, they could be, it's great if somebody's really experienced and knows a lot about magic, but uh, also it doesn't you know anybody anybody doesn't matter what they know but any human being that you can get to watch your magic you're going to learn from it the more the better prop building well um i think i think it's good to have some basic knowledge as a magician if you want if you want to create and invent then i think you need some basic knowledge now um i i do i you know i usually make a mock-up of something just something to, to 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 play with something so i can get the in, in the flow the action and get the, and pretend you know and so i you know it, it, it's prop building it's basically about tools and materials um, and, you know, I, uh, I, I, I've, over the years, I've built up quite a lot of different types of materials, different types of card, different types of plastic, metals and woods. And I was thinking the other day about um, uh, tape and glue. I mean, I think that it, it, prop building, particularly in the mock-up, before you get to the stage of metal and wood, you know, um, you, need, you need to really understand glue. And, uh, and, and tape. I mean, I, I've got like double-sided tape that's really strong that will stick metal to metal and it will be fixed. And then I've got other tapes that are perfect for, um, you know, card to card. And I was thinking I've got, with all the different, and then you've got masking tapes, you know, that, that, that will stick onto things, but that you can peel it off and it won't, it won't damage the thing. And then you've got gaffer tape, which is really heavy duty, strong. You know. So I, I, I think I must have, oh, at least 10 different types of tape and then probably about another 10 different types of double-sided tape and probably at least 10 different types of glues you know and understanding you know spray glues and uh, super glues and you know double double bonding glues and yeah so i think i think uh, having a good toolkit lots of different types of glues and tapes and some basic materials um, you know, sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit inspired, but I'm not quite sure what to do, I, it's never a bad idea 
to go into a, an arts and crafts shop and go and spend 50 or 100 pounds on 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 a few things because then when you've got these things around it, it somehow it kind of it, it opens possibilities and it, it, you know you're more likely to want to start making something Our experience of life is built on the belief system that we operate out of, the things that we think are true. Um, I would say that all of our belief systems are false. They're just not, they're all, we, the whole way we have our world figured out, it's just an illusion. You know, we, we like to think that our opinions are the, the right ones and that we know the truth about life, philosophy, religion, whatever. But um, I, I don't think we do. I think it's all made up. We've just made it all up. So the things that enable us to create and the things that stop us from creating are like, are just things that we have been telling ourselves. So, when I try to, when I move to a, a greater position of creativity, it, you know, moment by moment, when I'm, let's say I'm stuck and I, I, I don't know, I can't think, you know, I'm not, I'm not being creative, or, you know, I'm watching television or it's, you know, I'm on a negative uh, state. I recognize that these things are just, this is just, I've, I've talked myself into this situation. I can talk myself out of it. Um, so, I mean, if any, any like it, the, the, the number one thing that stops people from being creative is that they have a belief that they're not creative. So that's the, you know, people say, oh, I'm not very good at that. You know, I mean, I was talking with a friend, uh, we were talking about double lifts and uh, we we're talking about uh, uh, a, a pinky count to me a, the, a pinky count is, is the best way of doing a double lift and uh he said uh he said oh i, I just i don't have the strength in my pinky and uh, so that is a totally false belief or that uh, stops him from doing doing that um so we were talking and i said what well, the reason the reason that you like the reason he hasn't done that move, a better way to look at it, a more empowering, useful uh, thing to believe is that you can't do the double lift because you haven't figured out the finger position, literally the position point of the pinky against the position point on the deck and the way that you caress, hold the deck, you know, you know, just just figuring out literally, is it here, is it here, you know, where the finger positions are. And um, again, it's not that that's any more true. It's just a more, that's a, that's a more workable idea. It, so to me, something's true to the, to the degree that it's workable when applied to the problem that you're applying it to. So um, yeah, so general tips for creativity. It's difficult to, to say, just recognize the stuff you're telling yourself that stops you from being creative. And uh, to start, start telling yourself things that, uh, that, that give you power and freedom and access to create. Mm -hmm.